Hello and welcome to C++ Weekly. I'm your host Jason Turner. This episode is going to be one that's just a little bit different. I am going to be walking you through a very simple but practical tool that I have been playing with because it's something that caught my interest in a recent episode of CBP Cast. It was something that an idea that I came up with while we were chatting with our guests. So I made a quick note of it and I put it together and I've I'm pretty pleased with this, honestly. So I hope you like this episode. All right, so what I want specifically is to create a bit pattern match utility. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to just kind of make a really simple test here to show what I'm looking for. I want to be able to do something like this. I want a static assert at some value. Now this is going to be something that might be used for uh, parsing protocols or writing an emulator or something like that. And it's the kind of thing that ends up being just a little bit ugly when we write this stuff by hand. So I wanted to make it, well, not by hand. So I wanted to say I want some thing. Let's do this pattern. I want to say static assert that this literal is equal to my bit pattern. Uh, and I am a little bit lost, honestly, as to whether or not this should be an equals operator overload or some other operator or a function call. I ended up going with equals operator overload and specifically with the value on the left hand side and the pattern on the right hand side. To me, that made sense. Um, but it won't compile in any other way by the time we're done with this project. I want to say, I, I want this to match the pattern. I want to say the first two bits must be one. And then I don't care what the next three bits are. And the last bit is one. So I can do something like that, or if you prefer something like this. But I want a way of saying, I care about the first two bits. No, uh, yeah, something like this. Let's actually, I'm gonna add one more value here, just to make a point. So the first two bits must be one one, the last two bits must be one zero. I don't care what the middle three bits are. That's my goal here. So I started to think, can this be done and can this be done in an efficient way? So, well, I think it can be. So I've got my bit pattern class. This isn't going to be a template. What? Um, with a two pieces of data that are key here, I need, and now I've decided to go with UN64T. Um, I don't know if that's also the best thing. Perhaps I should have templated on the actual size of the thing here, but for our purposes, it doesn't really matter. This is the largest built-in type, so it'll work with everything. I need to know what the pattern is that I actually need to match. So there's gonna be two pieces to this. This code is gonna to have to generate a mask. Um, maybe I'll comment this here. The match is the expected And I want to initialize that as zero because I need to parse the string still. Now the mask is the set of bits that I do care about. Actually, let's give these slightly different names. So if this mat pattern matches, then it'd be something like input with a bitwise and of the mask is equal to the expected result. That is what we're going for ultimately. Now the mask, ultimately I, I care about all of the values except for the things that are X's. 
So I'm going to initialize this with a hard-coded value for a 64-bit integer that is all ones. Now I need to actually build my pattern and the expected value and the mask based off of the pattern that was passed in here. Now I'm going to require this to be a character string literal, one that is known at compile time. And I'm going to do that with a template that is templated over the size of the input string. Now, of course, we're going to make this explicit because we don't want just any random string being convertible into a bit pattern. That sounds like a bad idea. And obviously I show this static assert down here. So this needs to be a const x for constructor. Now I've got this template on the incoming size of the string and this syntax messes me up every single time I go to use it. So this is what it looks like, and I'll describe it in a moment. So what I am getting is a reference, This and these parentheses are necessary. If I remove these parentheses, this thing does not compile. This So input is the name of the parameter coming in, and it is a C style array that is actually known at compile time. Normally, if you do this kind of thing where you do an array parameter pass to a function, you pass in a size with it and it's not a template, then that actually decays to just being a pointer parameter to the function and it doesn't do what you want it to do at all. It's a very sad situation. So this is what we want and now I need to loop over all this. I can use a ranged for loop, and actually this is a really smart way to do this because it proves, in fact, that the size of this thing is known at compile time. So if val equals zero, then we have reached the end of the null terminated string. We'll simply return from here. If val is one, then this is a bit that I need to set. So I'm coming in and I've parsed this one right here. So I need to come up with, okay, how do I set this one in the expected value? And the method that I ultimately decided upon here was that I'm going to keep a running, what is the current bit that I am currently looping over? And this is a little interesting. So this is actually going to fail if you passed in a zero length string. But I am saying now I have to do size minus two, because keep in mind the length of the string is the length of the string passed in plus the null terminator. So I am saying however many bits were passed in, that is the current bit. I'm starting at the high order bit, which is true in fact. I am parsing at the high order bit here. So now I have what the current bit is, and we're going to have to increment this later as we loop through all this. I am going to do or equals. Or equals a bit wise or equals is just going to set that bit in our expected value. So we're setting that bit if one was passed in. If val is equal to zero, there's nothing to do because I, the whole thing was already initialized to zero. Now is where things get a little bit interesting. If the val passed in, now the character that I'm parsing is a value that I don't care about, then I need to clear that bit in the mask. And I'm going to do that with a bit wise and equals of the bit wise complement of the current bit. So if the current bit is something like 
this, then the bitwise complement becomes this. And now by doing that, I am saying, I want you to keep all of the bits in the mask. So let's just say the mask equals that at the moment. Then I do a bitwise and with this. So let's see what that would look like. A bitwise and with this new value come in. Then the result is going to look like this. Like that. So I just cleared this incoming bit right here. So that's what I am doing here. Now, regardless uh, of what happens, if, if I've got some input that I don't understand, if it's not zero, it's not one, and it's not X, then I have to do something. And I can, even though this is a const expert function, I can throw standard logic error. Now, I want to point out real quick that I am using GCC trunk at the moment. That'll be important in a moment. So if at compile time I give an invalid value, it's, it's going to fail to compile. You can't throw an exception at compile time. And we need, and also I would just like to give a quick shout out to Matt Godbolt for inspiring some of the implementation of this, which again I'll get to in just a moment here. Now the last thing and important thing to do is for each loop iteration, I need to shift the current bit down one. I start at the high order bit, I'm working my way down to the lowest order bit. So that should be working. And, you know, Compiler Explorer is a great, great way to prototype these things. Now, the only thing that's remaining is I do, in fact, need an operator equals. Now, uh, if you look at my episode on understanding operator overloading, you'll see why I made this an inline friend operator equals overload. So I want the left-hand side to be the incoming value. I'm making it UN64T. If, uh, we probably maybe should make this a template and say that it requires that the left hand side be an unsigned integral but at the moment this doesn't require any C++ 20 but it will in another minute so let's just keep going with this and the actual implementation of this operator equals equals is pretty straightforward. It's exactly what we said it would be a little bit ago. So return if the value bitwise handed with the mask equals to the expected value. And I have the problem that I have public and private backward. So that compiles. So I have a compile time check to see if this is equal to this. Now this is const expert static assert. If you are used to these things, you should not be at all surprised that this compiles away to nothing here because we know that it all happened at compile time. And in fact, I have gotten feedback in the past in C++ weekly episodes where people say, oh, but you, you know, if I was not compile time, you know, what the compiler could do with it? Uh, okay, so we will address that. Let's see what exactly happens if we want to do some sort of bit pattern match against argc here.
some relatively complicated made up pattern that makes no sense at all in our bit pattern type here. And I need to update the signature for argc. And add a meaningless argv here. And we did say, let's just go ahead and do this. Now, the problem here is when I go off the plans, this is requiring that that is an uh, constraints not satisfied because that's not unsigned. And this is a bit pattern. This came up in other episodes. This is kind of ugly, but I think it kind of makes sense. Okay, so this is an unsigned thing. Now we've got this bit pattern and we're returning this thing from main. So let's look at main. This kind of looks like it's doing a lot of work here. We can actually see that it's, it's actually parsing this thing, even though these are all values known at compile time and it was compiled with 03. Now, if I did this, where I declare this thing const expr, now all of a sudden it magically goes away. The compiler is able to completely parse this whole thing at compile time. It optimizes it for us. And this is, you know, if I take this down to O0, what does it do here? Uh, it's still not parsing it. It's still doing some of these magic comparisons here where the compiler's optimized away all of this bit stuff for us at compile time but I had to make the thing explicitly const expr. Now this is what's gonna take us to the trick, if you will, that uh, Matt showed me not that long ago. And this is actually really important and amazing thing to think about here. So we're already in C++20 land, we're in 03, this is doing all this. Now I have noticed that both GCC and clang trunk do the same thing. It doesn't make sense for bit pattern to ever be constructed at runtime. For our use case, we want this to be fast. We want it to be compile time. It requires a character string literal. It can't compile with anything else. So we can actually make this const eval. So const eval is the C++ 20 keyword that says this function must be called at compile time. And if I use that, I get all of this extra magic that I want. So if I were to put like an A in the middle of this thing, then I'm gonna get a compile time error saying throwing this exception of unknown characters and bit pattern input, Ooh, let's fix that. So we get compile time feedback as to what went wrong we get all of the optimization that we want. And if I go even all the way back to O0, I still get the optimization I want and the compiler has parsed the string at compile time because this function is const eval and it must be called at compile time. So there you go. This is a highly efficient and in my opinion, very versatile little bit pattern matching utility that you can use uh, for any number of applications and you don't have to worry about it having overhead that you weren't expecting if you're on one of these compilers that always evaluates const eval at compile time like they should since it is a compile time required function. And you can see even at 01, we get the really high performance kind of pattern uh, bit masking behavior. So I'm pretty happy with this. This will be up on the just freshly created C++ Weekly official GitHub repository. Um, be sure to uh, check it out. I hope you enjoyed this episode longer than I expected, even though I did have a solid plan. Be sure to subscribe. Give me a thumbs up.